I'm Energy Man. We're doing the moonshot today from Kauai. We've tried every certain technology you could figure out from NASA, and we finally, I think, got this up and running. So thanks to Robert and Cindy in the studio and Jay and Eric over here on Kauai to make it all happen. And thanks for the patience. Uh, Brad over there at KIUC in Lehui. Uh, holy mackerel, what a day you have today. Anyway, um, today's show is all about uh, looking at a utility grid. It's, I want to say, pretty unique in the whole wide world. Um, over here in Hawaii, we have uh, Hawaiian Electric running most of the grids in the state of Hawaii. But we also have one island. It happens to be the island that King Kamehameha never really captured because he couldn't get his canoes over here without sinking his fleet. He lost half his fleet on two tries and gave up trying to take over the island of Kauai. So the folks here in Kauai are really independent, and they have their own independent power source now, and it's Kauai Island um, Utility Co-op. And, uh, Brad, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate you uh, having the patience to stick this out, and uh, welcome to the show. Yep, thanks for having me, Stan. Glad to be here. Hey, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do at KIUC? Sure. Uh, I'm uh, I'm the power supply manager for KIUC, and what that means is um, I oversee our our generating plants, our power plants. Um, I also manage all our purchase power contracts, um, and the grid operations falls in under that as well. So just the day to day operation of the electric grid. Um, but I spend a lot of my time developing our renewable projects around the island. Um, I'm a uh, mechanical engineer by trade, um, but also um, got my uh, executive MBA from UH. So I really enjoy both the operations, the engineering, financial, all, all sides uh, that KIC allows me to get my fingers into. So did you grow up here in Hawaii, a specific in Hawaii? No, I grew up in uh, a suburb of Los Angeles, California, uh, went off to school at the Naval Academy, uh, did some time in the Navy uh, in California. Uh, after the Navy, I, I worked for Solar Turbines, which is a division of Caterpillar, and then uh, later uh, General Electric in their power systems division. And when I was working for GE, I, I did a project uh, here on Kauai at the Port Allen Power Plant in the summer of 2000. Um, and that's kind of how I got to know some of the folks in the utility business here on Kauai and ended up uh, coming back permanently about a, a year and a half later at the end of 2001 to help get our new, well, the then new Kauai power station uh, completed and online. And so you've, uh, you went to the Navy before. That's great because uh, you know, Port Allen here was pretty active at... Um, with Barking Sands and doing Pacific Missile Test Range work, and uh, did that have anything to do with you kind of coming in this direction? No. Yeah, it's funny because I, I remain an officer in the Navy Reserve to this day, and people always kind of think, oh, you must work at PMRF. And I said, no, I work for a you say I really don't have a whole lot to do with PMRF other than the, uh, the current commanding officer being my classmate from the Navy. Right. But otherwise, no, I, uh, I do most of my reserve duty off island, and uh, when I'm here on island, I'm wearing my KIUC hat. Well, you know, I think, like you might have heard on the intro, I think KIUC is pretty unique in the world in that uh, most public utilities can't take uh, more than 15, 20 percent intermittent renewables like solar, and KIUC has quite a bit more than that, and, on, and is working towards 100 um, percent. What percentage are you guys up to now? So, um, and this might be a good time for Robert to throw up image one, um, and um, what that's going to show is our um, kind of our 2010 power supply mix, which was kind of where we were for most of, uh, you know, the early 2000s, and as recently as 2010, we were about 92% oil and 8% renewable, and really all those renewables were hydro, uh, solar photovoltaic, which is a big part, uh, as you're going to see on the next image, wasn't really viable, wasn't really cost-effective at the time, um, and uh, we've been real aggressive in pursuing solar over the last decade, and as you'll see in image two, our uh, current mix is 54% uh, renewable, 
6% oil with uh, the biggest chunk of that coming from solar now. Um, that's been really the best fit for this island, as well as some hydro and some biomass. But solar continues to be um, very modular, very cost-effective, and it works well here on Kauai. Uh, wind is notably absent. Uh, we are challenged by a few other things that some of the other islands are faced with in uh, trying to bring some wind online, so we've pushed hard on the solar. Well, how much, you know, you mentioned that you have um, hy uh, hydroelectric. Is that from the old sugar flumes and uh, the agricultural side? Yeah, exactly. The, uh, they're, they're pretty much all legacy plantation hydroelectric plants. Okay, well, you know, HECO talks about their duck curve all the time and, and how hard it is for them to balance their grid. I mean, you're a much smaller grid than HECO, obviously, on, on Oahu, but, you know, tell us some of the challenges that you have managing all that intermittent renewable on a grid the size of, uh, of uh, your operations. Sure, and, and just to put things into perspective, our, our grid um, all-time peak was uh, just a hair under 78 megawatts. We, we're not really seeing that these days. We're seeing closer to, you know, more in the 72 to 75 megawatt range. Um, and that peak demand comes about an, within an hour after sunset each day. Um, so during the midday, when we're getting the high solar penetration, you know, around the noon to 1 p.m. hours, our demand is is typically more in the 50 to 65 megawatt range, depending on the day of the week and the time of the year. And we have currently over 100 megawatts of solar installed on the island. That's nameplate capacity. So we have about, you know, on some days, two times as much as are actually demand on the nameplate capacity. Um, you can break that solar capacity down into roughly one-third buckets. About one-third is customer-owned rooftop-type stuff on businesses and homes. About one-third is utility-scale solar projects without uh, any significant energy storage. And then the last third is, um, you know, solar photovoltaics that are backed up with significant energy storage that allow us to store that energy midday and then shift it to an evening demand time. And and how much energy storage, and I assume it's all batteries, is that correct? How much energy storage do you have in full hours? We have, um, let me just do the math really quick. We have, uh, uh, we have about just about 40 megawatts, let's call it, 40 megawatts uh, of energy storage in a power rating and an energy rating. It's... Um, about 160 megawatt hours, and then okay. we've got a project uh, in construction right now at the RF uh, site that is going to add another 14 megawatts of battery and 70 megawatt hours to, that, to those two. Okay, so all, in one one location, what's the largest um, solar st or energy storage uh, that you have in a battery? Like, what's the biggest battery collection you have there in megawatt hours? It, that's our AES uh, Lawai project. It is on the south side of the island, and it's a, it's a 20 megawatt, 100 megawatt hour battery. Okay, 100 megawatts at 20 megawatt size. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be back in 60 seconds with Brad from KIEC, and uh, we'll continue to, to talk about the, some of the unique challenges that, that you have when you have to balance uh, a grid this size using a bunch of renewables. So we'll be back in 60 seconds. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. 
I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Stand the Energy Man on my lunch hour as usual. And man, we got the technical wizards working on everything here. We went from a crowded, noisy inside to a crowded, noisy outside, trying to improve the sound over here. But hey, um, Brad, thanks again for, for putting up with all this stuff. Um, can you tell us some of the challenges you have working with a utility scale operation that has this much intermittent renewable in it? You know what I mean? A lot of people can't appreciate the, the challenges there because you not only have to be able to carry the average load of the, the systems on your grid, but you have to be able to have the spikes and the, the peaks and valleys and keep everything smooth because your customers demand good power and you're obligated under as a public utility to give them good power. But I know that's pretty challenging. Could you explain some of those challenges? Yeah, I'll do my best, Sam. The, the challenges are, are a few different um, can kind of be spoken down in a few different areas. The first is the intermittency of a resource like solar and wind. You know, for solar specifically, uh, here in Hawaii, we get typical trade wind weather. Clouds are always moving across the, uh, you know, between the sun and the solar panels, and so it's causing large swings in the power output of these uh, solar panels and these utility scale solar farms. And so that basically, that moves frequency around all day long on the grid. So we have to mitigate that variable frequency in order to deliver good power uh, to our customers and to not cause a problem like load shed, uh, things like that. And then the next thing is to just going back to how much nameplate capacity solar we have. I mentioned that we have twice the amount of what we have at uh, demand during the midday. So we, we have to manage... Um, Supply and demand, just balancing out all these, you know, this excess of resources, if you will, of supply assets and with our demand at every second of the day and making sure that if we have an excess, we're appropriately storing it or we're curtailing as necessary and we're managing all those assets um, so that we can, you know, favor the, the low-cost renewables that we have um, as much as possible. and. And that's been really uh, uh, something that's taken us most of the last decade with, you know, changing the air permit requirements on our conventional units that allow our, our oil-fired units to operate at their bare minimums. You know, we've typically conventional units are limited to only going down to 50% of their, their rated uh, output. But we've gotten ours down to uh, essentially zero so we can run them all the way down. Specifically, our largest generator on the island now operates most of the day in what's called a synchronous condenser. So it's, it's providing support to the grid uh, without consuming any fuel and it's available to come back and provide power if we need it within a couple of minutes. So that's just basically making our generating fleet, our conventional fleet uh, that consumes fossil fuels, very flexible and able to complement our intermittent solar resources. Uh, and you now I could probably go on and on, but I'll just stop there and okay. see if that Yeah, I was I was gonna say, you know, you've gotten uh, so far, you know, how soon do you think is a realistic goal for Hawaii to come off of fossil fuels completely and just go with your renewable sources and storage? Yeah. Well it's really you know, first of all, you know, when we talk about a hundred percent think you know, will we ever never um, consume a drop of fuel to, um, to to power the grid? I mean, I think that's kind of far out there for me to see because um, the reality is we we would have to significantly overbuild the renewable resources if we wanted to ensure that we never consumed a drop of oil to generate electricity. Um, uh, you know, that, that assumes we don't use biofuel, liquid biofuels or something, which I think would be an easy solution to that issue. But, you know, we don't want to have to overspend and overdevelop um, for this goal. We want to do it while we're keeping rates low and stable. And so, you know, if, if we can we can get, you know, 90% and above, 95, maybe even 99 
uh, very soon. And it's really just a matter of how quickly we want our to step on the, the gas pedal. Um, we here at KFC try and take somewhat of a portfolio approach when we're pursuing our renewable goals so that we don't invest too heavily um, in any year. You know, we, we think that solar pricing is going to continue to get better. And so we wouldn't want to do everything this year, for example, and not be able to do anything next year or the year after. So we like to kind of do, you know, be always in continual project development mode and, and uh, you know, developing new projects and rolling out older, more expensive runs, replacing them with newer and better technology that hopefully is cheaper. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned something really important to me there, and that is when you're using so much renewable energy on your grid, the amount of storage when you don't have fossil fuels available becomes critical because people don't realize how much energy is stored in a in oil or diesel or you know what you're putting in your oil fired power plants. It's a very energy dense um, way to store and very inexpensive. Um, did Kauai uh, utilities ever consider using hydrogen energy storage, like? Um, using any of your curtailed or your surplus uh, energy to make hydrogen, store it, and then use fuel cells to put it back on your grid? Yeah, you're exactly right with that, um, you know, energy density. And I think that, you know, is a whole other subject that you can get into about how renewables are going to change the landscape of our islands if we really arrive at 100% renewable, um, you know, reality with a lot of it coming from solar and wind. Um, but Hydrogen, um, you know, one of the challenges we have here on Kauai is we are somewhat of a small system. We're very cost conscious. We don't want to get too involved in things that aren't well commercially proven. I always like to say if I can't go buy something from a GE, a Siemens, or, or something like that, then, you know, we want to make sure we're being careful about it. So. Um, we haven't looked seriously at hydrogen yet. I hope that becomes an option that's that's more viable and that proves out to be cost competitive with with battery storage. Um, but right now, everything's sort of in the lithium ion battery storage that's largely driven by the consumer electronics business, the automotive business, um, and we're able to kind of take advantage of that. Right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to have some conversations, just the two of us, maybe some other folks in the utility here. Because I'm a, I kind of bullish on hydrogen, and uh, I just came back from the Department of Energy's um, merit review for hydrogen systems across the U.S. And uh, even Dr. Chu from uh, President Obama's administration, who was kind of not not a big hydrogen supporter when he was in the seat for eight years, has finally come out and said, "Hey, hydrogen looks like the way to go in the future." And it's because the technology is becoming more commercially available and the price point is dropping down there. So I'll come over and talk to you about that. But hey, one, la one last question, because we're probably running close to the end of time here. Um, is your network actually have any island capability where certain communities can kind of be pulled off by themselves in the event of a hurricane? Like I know Hawaii has taken the brunt of two, two at least big hurricanes. And um, the survivability and sustainability of uh, your grid, is is it islanded at all, or do you have any of those kind of protections built in? Yeah, we we, um, we do. Uh, it's not something we typically do in, during the normal course of operations. But, yeah, following a hurricane, let's say our, our main transmission line down between Port Allen and the Uri, we're pretty confident that we'd be able to um, you know, while we were waiting that transmission line to be restored, that we could operate power in the Uli area as one grid and you know, power along the west side as the second grid. Um, one of the benefits that you get from these renewable projects being all over the island, and specifically those with energy storage or significant energy storage, is that you've got these assets now that can, that can actually operate the grid in those areas. And our, our Tesla solar and, and storage project is has specifically been set up to be uh, a grid-forming resource that can can operate the grid without needing any external source on it. Okay. I tell you what, we're coming up against uh, our end of our time here, and I really, really, really want to thank you for being flexible today. This has been a, a real adventure for uh, all of us over here in Hawaii, trying to pull out everything together. We spent the morning up at Coquay at the radar site talking to those folks. 
Well, thanks again, Brad. And um, I definitely want to have you back on the show sometime when I'm more settled down and less hair on fire. And I uh, get to talk to you a little bit more about uh, the future of um, Hawaii Island uh, Energy Co-op. So thanks, the utility co-op. So thank you so much for your patience. And uh, we'll be talking to you sometime in the future. Yeah, sure thing. Let's do it again. Thanks, Dan. Okay, thanks for your time today. Until next week, Santa Energy Man signing off. Aloha.